In today's video, we're going to be talking about some very aggressive cichlids, in particular a top 10 list of Central American cichlids that are known to be very aggressive. These are some beautiful and awesome species of cichlids and I can't wait to talk about it, so let's dive right in. So on today's video, we are specifically talking about Central American cichlids. A while back, we did a top 10 list of aggressive cichlids in general, which included African cichlids and South Americans. But in this list, we are only going to be focusing on Central American cichlids. So things like your Oscar, your Green Terror, Red Terror, Umbies, or any of your African cichlids for that matter won't be on this list. It's going to give us the ability to talk a little bit more in depth of some of these awesome Central American cichlids that can be a challenge to keep at times because they're known to be aggressive. But there are some nuances that we'll also talk about with each of these different species. So starting right into the list, at number 10, it is the Nicaraguan cichlid. And you're gonna notice that the first few on this list aren't hyper-aggressive cichlids, and some of them may even have some pretty docile individuals. My Nicaraguan cichlid is a female, and it really has not been very aggressive except when it's bred. Female Nicaraguan cichlids actually have some pretty good color, even better than the males but the males who are a little more brown and yellowish color with less red and blues, they tend to be pretty aggressive, especially when you have a male and female in your tank. So the male Nicaraguan cichlids could really get aggressive, especially if you don't have a big enough tank or the right tank setup. They need at least a 75 gallon tank or larger, especially if you have tank mates with them. And if you have rocks, driftwood, and other decor in your tank, it provides some good territories as they really like to claim areas in the tank as their own. My Nicaraguan cichlid is in the back left corner of my 180 and doesn't let any other fish get near it. So overall, it's not a super aggressive species, but the males can get pretty aggressive during breeding or if you don't have the right tank set up. So number nine on the list is one of our all time favorite cichlids and that is the Jack Dempsey. We've kept many Jack Dempsey's over the years and ours have actually been really docile. The only time we've seen aggression is when two male Jack Dempsey's have been in the tank together and then they'll really fight over dominance in the tank and it's just not a really good pairing. And Jack Dempsey's can get super aggressive when breeding. I think that's one of the main distinctions with Jack Dempsey's is that they can be super calm and laid back but that same fish could go nuts if they're starting to breed so maybe just don't get a pair if you're gonna have other tank mates or just get a male and female in a tank and keep them separate. But if you just get one male, for instance, you probably won't have any issue if you have a 55 gallon tank or larger. And if you put some appropriate tank mates with them, things like the Convict, Firemouth, Nicaraguan Cichlid, Rainbow Cichlids, some of those cichlids that can hold their own but aren't overly aggressive themselves, can definitely work well with the Jack Dempsey and then you can kind of get around that aggression that you might find in some of them. And because we're talking about aggression, it is interesting to note that the Jack Dempsey got its common name from a boxer named Jack Dempsey long ago when people thought the Jack Dempsey was always fighting others in the tank. But that's kind of false in my opinion because you can get a lot of individual Jack Dempsey's that aren't very aggressive. As long as you have the right type of tank set up, you should be just fine, similar to the Nicaraguan cichlid. And then number eight on the list is the convict cichlid. And again, you might be thinking these first three aren't even that aggressive, and that might be true, or you may have had some aggressive individuals of these, but the convict really is a feisty cichlid, especially for its size. It really holds its own against bigger cichlids. And if you put that in a community tank, it really can bully some of those community fish. The convict is a really beautiful fish with that gray and black striping. And then the females get a little bit of orange and pink color in their abdomen. And then they get some really cool fin extensions as well. One key thing to keep in mind with the convict, which is similar to the Nicaraguan and Jack Dempsey, the first three cichlids on this list should be just fine in terms of aggression if you put them in the right tank setup with the right tank mates and you're trying to avoid breeding. But if you don't have a pair of convicts in your tank, they will usually be much better behaved around other fish and sometimes could even be okay with community fish. Convicts can sometimes be a good beginner cichlid because they don't get too big and outgrow their tank, but they can also hold their own if you keep them in a tank with bigger cichlids. But they can also be a bad beginner fish if you don't do your general research on some of their care requirements and you put them in with like neon tetras or something, it will likely lead to issues and aggression. So if you're wanting to keep any of the first three on this list, you should be just fine in terms of aggression as long as you meet those minimum care requirements. 
And as we get into number seven on the list, we're starting to get into some bigger cichlids that can really be aggressive and have less of those nuances with peaceful individuals. This one on the list is the Vieja Argentia, and we have found that they are generally one of the more aggressive Vieja species. The Sinspillum and the Black Belt are two beautiful Vieja species, and they do get pretty big, so they can be bruisers in the tank, and they can definitely fight and be aggressive if they want to be, but we've found that the Vieja Argentia just picks fights a little bit more, and it just is more feisty in general. It's more aggressive during breeding, and it's just a harder one to keep in a community setup. Of course, if you keep all these different Vieja species together, maybe you have Jack Dempsey's and Nicaraguan cichlids, maybe even the convicts together, in a big tank like this one here, you should be just fine, but if you try to fit an Argentia into maybe a 75 gallon tank with a few other cichlids, sometimes that could lead to issues and fighting. And if they don't have enough space in the tank, they're going to be aggressive. But the Argentia is undeniably beautiful with that white and silver coloration. Its nickname is the silver cichlid. And once they mature, they have some really beautiful coloration with that silver and white a couple different splotches around the head and then some elongated fins that really look amazing if you're able to grow it up into its adulthood. And as we get into number six on the list, we're starting to become more and more aggressive here. And this one is the Texas cichlid. The Texas cichlid originates in the southern regions of the United States or in Mexico. And they have some beautiful coloration. There are even electric blue color patterns that you can find out there but they do become very aggressive, especially as adults and the males. We actually put a Texas cichlid in more of a community cichlid tank of Central and South American cichlids for the Chicago Bulls head coach, Billy Donovan. And you can see more about that tank in the upper right hand corner. But that Texas cichlid has actually played very nicely with these cichlids because it's kind of the dominant fish in the tank. It's not trying to fight for the top spot in the pecking order in this tank. And it's just a beautiful fish. It's grown into a really sizable fish. Sometimes Texas cichlids can reach a foot in length, maybe even slightly larger. And they do get some beautiful color patterns, so it's really easy to see why people want to keep them. And as we talk about the Texas cichlid or some of the next five on the list here, Many fish keepers will elect to keep them solo or in pairs in tanks because it really does get tricky trying to put them with tank mates. So just keep that in mind as we start getting into the top five on the list here. So coming in at number five on the list is actually two different species, but they're very closely related. And that is the Cuban cichlid and the Black Nasty. So these fish are from the same small genus of cichlids, the Nandopsis, and they do have some similar color patterns with some white, and black markings that really are stunning. The black nasties will get a little bit bigger than the Cuban cichlids and might require a 125 gallon tank or more. And you'll likely wanna just keep one or a pair of black nasties. But the Cuban cichlids stay a little bit smaller so you do need like a 75 gallon tank or larger for them. And you probably wanna keep them solo in a pair as well since they do get so aggressive. If you put them in a community style tank or a community of cichlids, they could do some real damage in that tank, so just beware of that. I'm actually gonna be putting my two Cuban cichlids that are in quarantine right now. They're gonna be going into my 75 gallon tank and I'll probably put a tank divider in there for a while just to ensure that both the male and female are okay and that they're not gonna be fighting too much right off the bat. So just keep all of that in mind. They are truly beautiful fish and that's why I'm keeping them. I also can't wait to go through a potential breeding project with these guys. But both the Black Nasty and Cuban Cichlid are both amazing fish with really unique color patterns and markings on their bodies. And I think that's why it's a really interesting fish to keep. I would totally recommend it. And then the number four cichlid on this list is one we get asked a ton about, and that is the Salvini Cichlid. My brother Quinn used to have a Salvini in his classroom, and it was a true showstopper. He had a female Salvini cichlid and it had bright yellow with some red on its body and even electric blue coloring around its markings. It's a truly beautiful fish with that bright coloration, but even just looking at it, you can see that it probably seems aggressive. And Quinn had that female Salvini in a 75 gallon tank with a Jack Dempsey, Green Terror, and Convict. It worked out for a year or two, but that female Salvini eventually just started beating up on the others and he had to remove it and rehome it. It was just totally too aggressive for those other fish. And that's why they're so high on this list is because they pack a mean punch even for a cichlid that's more mid-sized 
and not as big as some of the others that are coming up on the list. Coming in at number three is another genus of cichlids from the Parachromis family. That is the Jaguar, the Yellow Jacket Cichlid, and the RTM. I'm gonna leave off a couple of these because we're gonna talk about them later and you'll see why. But the Jaguar and the Yellow Jacket especially are just so similar and body shapes, coloration, and patterns, and almost size. The Jaguars are slightly bigger than the Yellow Jackets, but the general care requirements for the Yellow Jacket and the Jaguar are very similar. They're both absolutely stunning fish, but I do think they need to be kept in a tank with just a solo fish or a pair. Quinn's 90 gallon tank here has a Yellow Jacket cichlid that's kind of a young adult. It's reaching about nine inches in length, and it's a true showstopper. It has some teeth that are always showing, which is really cool. But if you're going to put the Jaguar or Yell Jacket with any other types of cichlids or other fish, you would probably need a massive tank. We're talking eight feet plus. Even in a tank that's like 125 or 180 gallons, it's gonna be really tricky to keep them with other fish, but they're super intelligent, personable fish with amazing color. So it is a fish that I would recommend if you're looking for that pet fish or a pair. It's just a really cool fish and as Quinn does right now, he just has it as a really cool pet that all of his students in his classroom really enjoy. And then the runner up on this list at number two is another genus of species. I know I'm kind of cheating here, but that is the Amphilophus. And this includes the Red Devil, the Midas, and the Trimac. These are just super aggressive cichlids. I think the Red Devil is probably the most aggressive, maybe the Trimac too, but it's just known that the Red Devils will eventually cause chaos in any tank you put it in, especially the males, and like all these, especially when breeding. But they also just get so big that they are just bullish in a tank, and they just have the size to dominate almost any other fish. So again, you're gonna need a massive tank if you're gonna keep them with tank mates, but it's almost a better idea to just keep them so low as a really cool pet fish in a big tank. And because they are so personable, like some of the Parachromis, it is a very rewarding fish to keep, and they really seem to get to know you. And then the number one most aggressive Central American cichlid is the Dovi. And I know I cheated a little bit because I already talked about a group of Parachromis, but I felt like I had to separate the Dovi because it is much bigger than the other Parachromis and it looks a little different with some different color patterns. And I just felt like it deserved its own spot on the list because it is ultra aggressive and that sheer size reaching up to two and a half, almost three feet in length, even in an aquarium and having that stunning blue color pattern and those teeth that stick out. It is just a cichlid that could kill any other fish in the tank with it if it decides to and a lot of times it does decide to. I've heard so many stories of Dovi that just completely destroyed tanks that they were in, even the massive cichlid tank setup. So it's very difficult to keep them with anything other than a pair or a solo fish, especially because of their sheer size. You're gonna need a huge tank even to keep one of them. And in keeping a pair, the tank size grows even more and keeping tank mates with them even more. So it's just a huge challenge. But Dovi are such beautiful fish with unique color patterns similar to its other Parachromis cousins. That huge size coupled with their awesome personality, it's just a really cool fish. And if you do have the means to keep them and you wanna keep the most aggressive Central American cichlid out there, it would be a really cool option. And that's why the Dovi slash wolf cichlid is number one on the list. And then a couple quick honorable mentions here. I will say that the Firemouth could be aggressive, but it's not a huge cichlid, and I will say it's more bark than bite most times when it comes to the Firemouth. And then there are two rare cichlid types that I've heard a lot about and talked to a lot of people about, and that is the Hypsophyrus nematopus, which is the poor man's Tropheus, and also the red Bay Snook cichlid, which has a really cool body shape and color pattern. So admittedly, they could make their way on a list like this in the future, but I hope you enjoyed hearing about the top 10 Central American cichlids we did talk about. There are a lot of awesome cichlid species on there that are beautiful and definitely worth keeping, even though that they're pretty aggressive. But if you have any thoughts or questions about any of the fish we talked about, make sure to leave those down in the comments section. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.